I was a fool. Was a fool. If you go back and watch the last installment of the History of Diablo 2 8 player world records, you might notice a screen grab I'd done for posterity. Little did I know what was to come in the world of Diablo 2 Resurrected. Brain like, on the this, is, this is crazy fast. Ooh. Ooh. Hell yeah! <laughs> this day is still. Yeah, let's go, baby! Yeah. Woo! So, there we go. There we so, go. Yeah. GG's. GG, boys. GG. Let's go! <laughs> 143? Five years? Fool! So, let's dive in for a much needed update to the history of 8 player Diablo 2 speedruns, as Diablo 2 resurrected, pumped the community full of energy, and break down the changes to strategies and organizing that turned something that seemed totally crazy into just another Tuesday. It wasn't long into the life of D2R before 8-player runs took off. In fact, a big driver for the historic sub-2 hour run in the original game was teams practicing for the launch so they could shoot to the top of the leaderboards. Unfortunately, and completely unsurprisingly, the unstable performance of online servers and the extremely slow load times had completely shattered these plans. Not to mention the fact that there weren't any leaderboards to shoot to the top of. So. 8 player runs went back to the original game, where the revolutionary harvest strategy I covered in the previous video was developed by legendary speedrunner Bender Meets Fry, greatly speeding up leveling. For a full rundown of this strategy, go check out the last video in this series. Nonetheless, three months after the game's launch, things had stabilized enough for members of Gymnasium's old D2 8-man Discord to come together and record a proper run. This time, Formally ensuring everyone's point of view was recorded and saved. The basic strategy was to make use of the new harvest approach in the early game. Rush through normal leveling as quick as possible to get to cows, looking to hit level 25 so they could do bail runs and hopefully get the runes for spirit. From here, one of the sorceresses dedicated to the role of teleporter would rush through the quest objectives while the rest of the team leveled through bail runs grinding first to level 40 for Nightmare Ancients, then level 60 for Hell Ancients. The team cruised in with a decent benchmark of 2 hours 20 minutes. Now, a 2.20 was pretty decent in the scheme of things, but certainly a far cry from the 155 that had been achieved in the original. How much of the 25 minute gap was load times, and how much was just the team shaking out the cobwebs from their gameplay was yet to be determined. It was around this time in early 2022 that rumbles of the first official ladder started emerging, where there would indeed be a leaderboard to climb to the top of. And so, gradually, teams started forming in preparation for hitting the servers, and as they practiced, the records would follow. Streamers from the community of the popular mod Project Diablo 2 had come across to Diablo 2 Resurrected and began practicing eight-man runs, with runners like Lucky Luciano, Papa Chris, Coogs, and Mr. Hollywood proving themselves and being recruited into Jim's Discord as ongoing members. At the same time, another group, Team Digital, had started practicing in earnest, and after some brief schmoozing on my behalf, got connected into the wider speedrun team ecosystem. This all culminated in Blizzard sponsoring an official race for the first to complete Hell Bale, with two Western teams and two Korean teams. With a much more experienced player base in the Western teams, most of the action was focused on the competition between the Lucky Llamas, officially headed by Lucky Luciano and Mr. Llama SC, but mostly just the core eight-man group Jim had been leading all along, and the Speed Technologists, who were leveraging a bunch of the top single-player speedrunners, led by Kano and Macaub. With this many players practicing, it became much easier to fill world record attempts. And as Bender had shown in the original game, there was plenty of room for experimentation. While ostensibly there was a quote-unquote competition between the teams, 
everyone was willing to help each other out, with many substituting in on one of the other team's practice runs. As things ramped up, by early March the main speedrun team, led by Jim, honed in on a new strategy, replacing one of the assassins with an extra paladin. While this was a little slower to get off the ground due to a paladin doing less damage than an assassin up until they unlocked Blessed Ammo, it did address some issues with the assassin's wake of fire cancelling each other out due to next hit delay effects, and the extra hammers and salvation would really pay off in the late game. Yeah. Ooh, I like the salvation a lot. That's what I'm saying, dude. Yeah, salvation's so this good. Is so dude. clutch. And the three hammered hands, though. <laughs> the, the, wow, just melting chaos. The damage is nice. I mean, I thought we were in uh, Nightmare for a second. I'm not gonna lie. Once the team got into Nightmare, things got rolling, and even without a spirit on their teleport sorceress, the team cruised in to a new record of two hours, twelve minutes. But with so much enthusiasm for the run, simply going with what had been done before wasn't cutting it. In the Discord, there were all kinds of theory crafting going on, and for the next record, a completely new strategy would rule the day. Classic strats. For those unfamiliar, when Diablo 2 first launched back in 2000, it only had 4 acts and 5 classes. With no act 5, there was no Ancients quest with a mandatory minimum level, and no bail fight. Handily, the characters could also be converted to full expansion characters at any time, so if you beat the game in Normal and Nightmare, once you got to Act 3 in Hell, you could convert your character into an expansion character and go on to kill Hell Bale, fulfilling the requirements of the 8 player Hell speedrun while effectively skipping 2 out of 15 acts. Seems great, right? Well, the problem was that you still needed to hit level 60 to get to Hell Bale, and you'd have to optimize your leveling strategy around that. No more bail runs in Normal and Nightmare for easy XP grinding. And Classic meant no rune words, and without stealth or spirit, the critical role of Teleport Sorceress would be much harder. Not to mention, two of the key classes of the existing composition, Assassin and Druid, were off the table, their expansion only. No Druid meant no Shockwave or Oak Sage, so crowd control and party life would be drastically reduced, and no assassin meant a big hit to damage output. To make up for this, an extra sorceress was brought in to make up for the damage output, and a necro was brought in for crowd control. For leveling, bail runs were instead replaced with what had become known as the taxi strat. The best way to level in Diablo 2 is to target boss packs and their minions, the random monsters who were granted magical attributes, each of these monsters gives 500% experience. This was why bail runs were so good. Every wave of minions is a boss pack. But with no waves, it was up to players to find boss packs for the group to come around and kill as the team progressed. This was where the taxi strat came in. Instead of players running around maps hunting for boss packs, the teleport sorceress would just keep an eye out as they teleported to the next objective, dropping a town portal and letting the team know. This way, the team wouldn't have to walk through each map to find monsters, they could just hang out in town and take a taxi to where they needed to be, making it much faster to get from place to place. This then culminated in grinding out the last levels they needed in the Hell Chaos Sanctuary, where the Hammerdens and Necro truly shone, blasting the previous week's record by 10 minutes and coming in with a time of 2 hours 3 minutes. And then, just as things were honing in on matching the original game's record, things changed dramatically. On the 14th of April 2022, Patch 2.4 dropped, and the changes to class balancing and load mechanics had a huge impact on the team composition and the times possible for the 8-man run. The biggest impact was in the unlikeliest of places, the Druid's Summoning Tree. While the standout to most players was the ability to have spirit wolves, dire wolves, and bears all summoned at the same time, the huge buff to Poison Creeper was a big deal for speedrunners. This boost to such an early game skill meant that the Druid was able to effectively and efficiently kill even players' eight monsters with minimal risk semi-passively. Just cast Creeper on a boss pack and keep running, barely any need to spend time fighting, and kill a bunch of regular monsters on the way too. 
This completely changed the early game progression dynamics, and after a brief time in the sun, classic strats were off the table. The Teleport Sorceress and Druid would run together, continuously progressing through Act 1 and only stopping to restart games after each Countess kill. Where previous records had a 22 minute Andarial split, Sub 20 was easy with the Druid carry, and the team blitzed their way through the normal in record time. With progression this fast, due to the early game limiting on experience gained by low level characters, this could have easily just shifted the bottleneck on leveling even earlier into the run, but the team came up with an optimized route to replace the old harvest strategy in Act 1. The Druid wasn't the only one to get buffed in Patch 2.4, and the change to Holy Bolt, allowing it to hit demons on top of the old undead limitation, greatly increased their ability to support themselves in 8 player settings. The full team no longer needed to be there to effectively harvest in the early game. You'd only need a couple of characters and they could handle it. And with less players in the zone, more XP would be gained, helping keep pace with the accelerated progression from the Druid carry. So the new strategy was to split into four pairs. The Teleport Sorceress and Druid would be on progression, running to Andariel as quickly as possible. A Paladin and Sorceress would go through the Forgotten Tower to get runes from the Countess. Another Paladin would do Tristram with the Barbarian. And the last Paladin would do the Pit with the Amazon. Wait, where the heck did an Amazon come from? Well, for the first ladder, Teo had set himself up to take on the enormous task of being the first to hit level 99 on a character dedicated to a recently passed member of the D2 8-man speedrun team. Chris Unsullied Sullivan. Now, this was before Blizzard added in Terror Zones, so the only efficient way to hit level 99 was essentially to kill Diablo and Bale, and only Diablo and Bale, over and over again. The Zon's ridiculously OP charge strike was the most effective tool for the task, and so, a Zon it was. Plus, in the late game, Lightning Fury absolutely destroys the Chaos Sanctuary when paired with a Conviction Paladin. So, while a Zon may be a bit slower at the start than a Sin, she would more than make up for it at the end. And, yeah, that's pretty much exactly how the run played out. After getting through the first act way faster than previous records, the team kept that lead the whole way through, from Normal to Nightmare and into Hell coming within 17 seconds of the original Diablo 2's record with a time of 1 hour, 55 minutes and 32 seconds. While loading times had been improved by Patch 2.4's ability to extract base game files, this was still no mean feat. The launch of the first ladder in the Infernal Race came and went, with some classic disconnect shenanigans ruining the result of course, and Teo got his first to level 99. But the speedrunning spirit wasn't exhausted. After ladder launch, a bunch of players from all the competing top teams came together with a will to keep practicing, launching a standing Tuesday speedrun group on top of Gymnasium's usual Saturday speedruns. Here, experimentation was welcome, from classic runs to incorporating different classes to just training up team members to get better instincts. It was all on the table. In early June, the team was practicing with the Assassin back instead of the Amazon, and things were schmoovin'. While the early game was a little slower, as the less experienced members were still coming up to speed, McCalb had been really honing his skills on the Teleport Sorceress role, and once he hit level 18, the pace took off. By the time Nightmare and Daria was dead, they went from 3 minutes behind to ahead of record pace. And when Hell Diablo fell, they were four minutes ahead. But while top tier teleport skills had sped up the act progression, leveling hadn't quite kept pace. It took another few chaos runs for all the players to hit the required level 60, but even so, they managed to get there a minute ahead of the previous record and carry that lead through the Ancients fight into the Bale kill. When the timer stopped, they'd finally done it. The remake was now faster than the original. But with this much energy directed toward the run, there was no chance that the 154 was going to last long. As the runs kept mounting up, 
Macalb's skill on the Teleport Sorceress kept getting better. It was a matter of if the rest of the team's levelling could keep up. A month later, things came together. With the more experienced Saturday speedrunner crew, communications were tight and everyone knew exactly what they had to do. A minor change to the very early game had the Teleport Sorceress and Druid running ahead to rack an issue instead of doing the den like in old runs. And with a minute time save on this alone, everything kind of snowballed from there. Getting to Act 2 earlier and having experienced map readers available meant that the Claw Viper Temple was done sooner, which meant that when McCalb hit level 18 and got teleport online, he was ready to fly through the Arcane Sanctuary, which then meant that the high experienced tombs of Tal Russia were ready for everyone else to farm even earlier. By the time that they were through normal, it was the fastest normal Bayo kill ever in an 8 player run and things were just warming up. By Nightmare Duriel, they were already a full act ahead of the old record. By Diablo, it was almost two full acts. Leveling cost them a bit of time, bringing the lead at the end of Nightmare back to only four and a half minutes, but they kept that lead all the way through hell and cruised into a new world record of one hour, 50 minutes and 38 seconds. And the trend of optimization continued. Over the course of the next two months, the record would be lowered again and again as players honed in on their coordination, minimized time loss to deaths and time in town, and frankly, just got better luck. In September 2022, the opportunity to beat my own previous insane prediction was tantalizingly close. Heck, with the right luck, a 140 was probably doable. But in a run where you need eight people together at a time, grinding for luck isn't really a sustainable strategy. Eventually, people are gonna drop off, getting into different games, being busy with life, and more and more often, you're just gonna come up with a sign-up sheet that doesn't stack up. And then, a breakthrough happened. After the nerfs to the Assassin's Lightning Sentry synergies in patch 2.4, the team had been scrounging around for other late game replacement options. Zon was alright, but took a while to take off. Necro was great fun in classic strats, but getting him working was proving difficult. But what if you didn't actually need another late game character? I mean, the Telesorceress and Barbarian were already glitching their way to the Hell Bale quest. If the Sin wasn't carrying her weight in Hell, and they were still able to get mid 140s consistently, why not focus on speeding up the other five players through to level 60? It was time for Lucky Luciano's ludicrous limo leveling. So, you want to get to level 60 as fast as possible, but your teleport sorceress taxi keeps leaving you lame old bishy bosh and deadly archers to fight? Who needs a taxi when you can instead indulge in the luxury of the limo sorceress? A second teleport sorceress dedicated to finding you and your team only the finest boss packs, the sweetest harvests, and let your teleport sorceress focus on what they do best, speeding. So if you want a power level like never before, don't take a taxi, take a limo. In team discussions, Lucky had pitched the idea of using the slot freed up by the assassin to instead boost the team's experience harvests with an extra sorceress. The early game static was super helpful, and channeling more experience into fewer players was a surefire way to speed up the leveling bottleneck that had been stalling out other runs that were otherwise on great pace. In September 22, the team put the theory into action and it immediately paid off. On their first attempt, the team got a 145, just short of the new record. While Lucky had a lot of time spent teleporting around finding nothing, the new strategy was clearly dominant from the start. Two days later, the team got together and they smashed the old record. First, with a 141-21, even without a spirit. Then to really hammer the point in, the Tuesday team backed it up two days later, coming in with a 141-13, which they then tied again the following week. With the second ladder launch only a couple of weeks away, everyone was keen to keep practicing. 
So each week there'd be a bunch of runners coming together to challenge the record. Sure, this time there'd be different teams going for first bail kill on ladder day one, but with no official race, there was no sense of rivalry, just a joint drive toward progress. Just a few days before season two's launch, with a bit more practice on limo strats, the team hit level 40 faster than ever and carried this lead through to secure a new record of 140.17, tantalizingly close to another 10 minute landmark. At the start of season two from this once sleepy discord server came three full teams of speedrunners who of course were the first 24 players to kill hell bale and start hunting for the first new uniques that diablo 2 had seen in two decades sunder charms they even uncovered a bug relating to the item find skill which had them dropping far more often than intended the latter and a grind to level 99 utilizing the new Terror Zones feature occupied a few of the key members of the group for a while, but others were keen to keep practicing. What had once been the sub 2 hour channel first shifted to sub 150, then sub 145, and now was sub 140. To reach this goal, all stops needed pulling. Inspired by some old school strats, the team brought back Druid summons to help tank since the combination of Oak Sage, Battle Orders, and Salvation made them practically invincible. But the highest risk play was to start incorporating Wave Skips into the Hell Throne Room fight against Bale. I've covered Wave Skips a few times in these history videos, but essentially by manipulating the loaded zone for monster interactions by entering and exiting a certain part of the throne room while Bale is summoning waves of minions for you to fight, a player can get Bale's summoning spell to entirely fail, skipping a wave of otherwise mandatory enemies. With no need for experience at this point in the run, each skip could save between 10 and 30 seconds, but the skill to get these consistently was considerable, and the potential for lag or desynced character positions in online play only added to the challenge. The downside was, if you failed a wave skip, that was around 10 to 25 seconds of wasted time as you either danced around the room for no reason and the minions were spawned anyway if you were too early, or if Bale laughs at you again and begins the process for summoning the same wave a second time if you were late. Since the launch of Diablo 2 Resurrected, Gymnasium had become a full-time Diablo 2 streamer, focusing heavily on speedruns, and he thought that he was up to the job. As the long-time informal captain of the eight-man speedrun crew, it only seemed appropriate that the risk lay with him. A month after ladder start, the team runs were back in earnest, and a few 140 runs had looked promising, but one thing or another kept holding them back. On November 19th, the team managed to scrape in a new record of 140.07 using skips. But still, the sub-140 eluded them. Finally, on January 7th, 2023, everything came together for the weekend crew. Cleaner gameplay from McCalb on the Teleport Sorceress got him to more boss pack harvests, hitting level 18 two minutes ahead of the previous record. This lead let the rest of the group focus on their own leveling sooner and held all the way through normal. Plus, an early spirit was a massive advantage over the 20 FCR wand McCalb had been rocking in the 140 record. Then, Lucky was able to find great experience harvests in Nightmare, which combined with continued top tier teleporting from McCalb, saved them another minute by the end of Act 3. And a bit of time lost to the ever present bottleneck of leveling was more than offset by an incredibly clean Hell Act 2. With far fewer deaths, the team had less experience lost and McCalb was able to get through to Duriel amazingly fast, carrying this lead straight to the Chaos Sanctuary, the best leveling zone before the Ancients. An hour and 32 minutes into the run, the five necessary players were level 60, the fastest leveling the team had seen by a mile. As they came into the throne, it was looking like a sub 140 for sure. Adding skips onto this, well, that was gonna be beautiful. I say everybody else leaves for skipping or no? Uh, I didn't practice any, so no. Well, skips be damned. Sub 140 hadn't just been beaten. 
it was thoroughly smashed. A 137 was beyond anyone's expectations, but the collective hours that had gone into this run across easily 30 players made the payoff all the sweeter. But some of the more perceptive viewers may have noticed something a little odd with the record times. Back in the original game, all speedruns had been done on ladder characters. Partly out of tradition, the original German crew formed for a ladder reset after all, and partly out of rune word considerations. Don't forget that spirit used to be ladder only. For Diablo 2 Resurrected, all the world record times had been done on non-ladder characters. This seems pretty minor at first, but something was niggling at me. A sentence from the old school Ariat Summit website that said monsters on ladder had more life and hit harder. Could it be that the entire time save against the 155 original game wasn't because of improved routing, team play, and changes to class skills? In short, no. Coming into the ladder launch for Season 3, the team came together to practice a run on ladder all the way through to Ubers. And, well, we almost got the friggin' world record right there. Less than a minute behind the non-ladder record for both Hellbale and Ubers. Any concerns about non-ladder being a hidden advantage were dashed. And 137 is where the record still stands. After the launch of Diablo 4, a lot of the momentum behind regular practice fell off. Although, the occasional run still manages to get a full sign-up sheet. In the time since, the team has gone on to get a sub 2 hour hardcore 8 player time and a 5 hour pacifist 8 player time. Recently, they've even branched out into speedruns of the Project Diablo 2 mod to keep things interesting. There's something exhilarating about 8 player speedruns in Diablo 2. Knowing your role and executing among the chaos, along with the occasional bit of banter among friends, is there a better category to play? There's a reason why ladder launches are always so popular, the guaranteed coordination of thousands of players all coming together to blast some demons and grind some gear is a surefire recipe for fun. I was a fool to think that the fun to be had in doing these runs wouldn't keep players grinding, and I'd be a fool to think that 137 is where the story ends. Oh, that was great. If only uh, we didn't have that. I mean, it wouldn't be a world record without someone getting dropped out, right? All right, so after I wrote and recorded this script, we went and did it again. On November 19th, 2023, the team got together for the first time in a while for some D2R runs, and something was in the air. First, the team got a run that would have been second place in the leaderboard with a casual 137.30 or something. And while everyone was still in the mood, we decided to kick on. Unfortunately, Dan couldn't make a second run, but the German speedrunning team were just finishing up a run of their own, so SGA was all warmed up and ready to join in. From the start, there was just something about the run. Some amazing Act 1 leveling and progression just kept things flowing, and by the time Normal Diablo was down, the team were four minutes ahead of record pace. Just to emphasize, it was looking like a guaranteed normal world record coming into the Ancients, but something had gone wrong. Oh, don't kill, don't kill, don't kill! Lav, got a disconnect, I guess. Lav had had a catastrophic hardware failure, and basically, only audio was coming through. He had to do a whole system reboot, while the rest of the team were left in the dark as to what was happening. I think we just glitched him through. Oh, yeah, just go continue. Hey, stop. If, if, if he's... With the call to hope for the best and glitch him through, the team persevered, and thankfully, just as they were coming into the bail kill, Lav rejoined. With the 30 second time loss from wondering what to do, and the extra time spent leveling in cows to make up for missing out on the Ancients quest, you'd think the run would have been wiped out, but nah. With Jim on the limo sork, delivering pack after pack of amazing experience harvests, by the end of Nightmare, the team were 4 minutes in front again. With the hell portion of the run fairly optimized already, just keeping the lead was no easy task, but the team came through with a crazy final time of 1 hour, 33 minutes and 18 seconds. 
This run still hasn't been verified on speedrun.com, but maybe, just maybe, there's a chance for a sub-130 somewhere out there. So, that's the end of the story. To play us out, enjoy the credits with some chaos.